It has been nearly 10 years since the killing of Trayvon Martin. In 2012, a neighborhood watch volunteer in Florida claimed the black teenager looked suspicious when he fatally shot him. Martin was actually just walking home from a convenience store. While Martin's killer was ultimately acquitted, his death sparked the Black Lives Matter movement, igniting a new chapter in the fight for justice, civil rights, and equality. New York Magazine's The Cut is taking a closer look at the 10 years since Martin's death and what's happened in the U.S. during that time period. Lindsay Peoples-Wagner is one of the creators behind this project. She's editor-in-chief of The Cut, which is part of New York Magazine. Lindsay, thank you so much for joining us. One of your colleagues interviewed Trayvon Martin's mother. How is she reflecting 10 years after her son's death? Thank you both for having me. Um, yeah, this is, it's a really difficult issue to read. And I think especially in talking with Derek Purnell, who wrote this amazing piece on Sabrina Fulton, it's really hard to stomach because I think Sabrina's overall feeling is that things haven't gotten much better. And I think that we all left feeling um, in reading her piece that, you know, we don't know if black lives are any safer. We don't know that things have really gotten any better. And, you know, this social reckoning has brought about a lot of conversations, but it still feels like there's so much work that needs to be done. Lindsay, Jerika Duncan here, that hashtag Black Lives Matter really became sort of a rallying cry after the death of Trayvon Martin. Um, can you talk about how that movement has evolved over this past decade and where you think it stands right now? I think the evolution, you know, obviously it started as this hashtag, but I think it's really become a cultural force that's reshaped American politics and identity. And I also think that it's become something that we now have to talk about in discussing whether, you know, companies, brands, places are actually rising to the occasion of making changes. And really, do they care about making sure that Black Lives Matter? Do they care about, you know, having empathy in the way that Black lives are treated? And I think that it started as something, obviously, you know, that people saw on social media, but it means so much more. And Lindsay, even after the death of George Floyd and the nationwide protests that followed, black people are still dying at the hands of police officers and others. What needs to happen to get to the point where we're no longer having these types of conversations? Right. I mean, in the case of George Floyd, um, Derek Chauvin, you know, was sentenced to 22 years. Um, but the three officers are on trial right now that were standing there, you know, watching as George Floyd said, I can't breathe over 20 times. And I think that really brought about the return of a mass protest and a desperate need to be heard because we all saw the filming of it. But I mean, I think that there is so much that still needs to be done because really, even though what ultimately helped bring accountability to Derek Chauvin, we want justice. And a justice would mean that George Floyd would still be alive and here today. I think uh, in reading some of uh, what Ms. Fulton had to say is that she wants her son's memory um, to stay alive. It's why they do annual walks. It's why even though 10 years, it doesn't get any easier, whether it's nine years, 15 years, whatever the case may be. What do you hope people take away from this moment as we mark 10 years since his death? I still remember wearing the hoodie and I actually found the photo the other day. And I think that, you know, Trayvon's death meant so much to me. And really, I, we wanted to honor his legacy in this. But I think just the understanding that, you know, she's she's a mother and that's still her son. That will always be her son. And I think the understanding that people, you know, may see it as a hashtag or, you know, may have shared the photos at a certain time. but. Time really stops for people like Sabrina Fulton who have to go through this kind of situation and are thrust into the spotlight. And I really feel for all the mothers. I mean, I've done interviews with Breonna Taylor's mother and sister and Samir Rice, Tamir Rice's mother. And, you know, for them, it becomes a lifelong cause and it should be for everyone. Lindsay Peoples Wagner of The Cut from New York Magazine, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you.